There are sons and daughters of Africa that have made the continent proud, both living and not. One of them is the first chartered accountant on the continent, Akintola Williams. Mr. Williams came with a lot of firsts. He's passed now, but before his death, this used to be his study. I'm Susan Illion. Welcome to Amazing Africans. It is the end of an era. A star has fallen, but not before shedding its light and illuminating as many as passed his path. Gracious, optimistic, decent, iconic, purposeful, frank, cultured, attentive, amiable, accountable, and responsible are some of the descriptive words found for Mr. Akintola Williams by those who know him. But aside from the importance he attached to accountability, responsibility, and integrity, his love was not mistaken for education, cultural issues, music, and family. Products of the Muson Center in Lagos charging the atmosphere with sumptuous sounds. From high life to percussion. Classical music. Imagine if the school were non existent. Well, maybe the path of these music performers would have taken another calibration. Oh jeez, music is my life. Even if I do not have anything to achieve in it, I won't stop doing it. It's what I do when I'm sad, when I'm happy and everything. Mr. Akintola Williams, in company of three other gentlemen and a lady, founded the Music Society of Nigeria, otherwise called the Muson, which is the proud owner of what is adjudged Nigeria's only professional symphony orchestra and choir of renown. At age over a hundred years, his voice was still clear. So were his eyes, such that he never needed visual aid till death. And so, at an event well attended by the creme de la creme in Nigeria and beyond, Mr. Williams aroused the hall to its feet by that same voice noted to have possessed authority and convincement. Your Excellency, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Kolade, ladies present here today, and gentlemen also 
who are here to greet this great occasion. At age over 99, it's difficult for me to know what to say to an assembly of this nature. Thank you very much. Age is telling on me, and I cannot stand for too long. <laughs> Mr. Williams uh, was not a very, uh, I wouldn't say ambitious, he wasn't a greedy person. He didn't want too much wealth around him. He wanted to be seen as a respectable gentleman across. And we all, all saw him as a mentor, as somebody you want to be like. He was a, a natural leader, a natural born leader, but a soft leader. And uh, really shouted, really raised his voice. And uh, I think the perfect example of soft power, just looking at him and uh, following his lead. And he's a wonderful person to follow. In 1960, Nigeria had its first experience of the Stock Exchange, which was then christened the Lagos Stock Exchange. It launched in August of 1961 and later renamed as the Nigerian Stock Exchange. The Nigeria Exchange Group, as it is now called, is a leading integrated market infrastructure in Africa, which is championing the development of Africa's financial markets. Mr. Akintola Williams was one of the founding fathers of the Stock Exchange. For he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow. And so say all of us, hooray, and so say all of us, hooray. And so say all of us, hooray, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow. And so say all of us. He was, until Monday, September the 11th, 2023, the last man of the original signatories to the Article of Association. Well, I have been asked to say something, and if I was just asked, I would have demanded to be allowed to say a word or two. <laughs> First of all, let me congratulate you for this beautiful stock exchange building. I knew what we thought the stock exchange should be, but I never dreamt that the building will be so imposing. My earliest memory will probably be uh, at a dinner event uh, where my predecessor, Mr. Ikazabo, Emmanuel Ikazabo, introduced him. And uh, he was very uh, pleasant, personable. And what struck me was his very British mannerisms. Uh, he had a suit on, he spoke uh, with a British accent. And you could see that this is a gentleman that uh, has um, a lot of integrity, uh, uh, and he was real uh, you know, in the way he engaged and interacted with people. I, th I think he was very proud of it. Um, they really established uh, an institution that uh, believed in integrity, uh, that provided a sound marketplace, um, and provided employment for a lot of uh, brokers, 
provided access for raising capital for companies. So really strong impact uh, on the Nigerian economy over the years. Since its establishment in 1965, the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria has found its prime position as a founding and prominent member of the International Federation of Accountants, the body which regulates accountancy profession globally. ICANN also boasts as Africa's largest professional accounting organization, since representing more than 46,000 chartered accountants and 23,000 associate accounting technicians. ICANN is another brainchild of Mr. Akintola Williams, whose passion for the accountancy profession is not in doubt. Chartered accountant is not supposed to be a domain you will find a black man. But it happened to navigate that theory to become the first chartered accountant. It must be an environment where only the white men operated, but he broke the jinx. That passion meant that eventually he founded that farm that today is one of the big four farms, of which many are beneficiaries. 1954, Mr. Akitola Williams did the broadcast of the Western Nigerian Broadcasting Service. It was called Rediffusion Service then. He gave a talk on how to be a professional accountant. That broadcast turned the attention of non-science students to accountancy. Papa's legacies are immeasurable. Every corner, every office, every company has an accountant. Every corner, every office, every business has an auditor. You can go and see the list of companies that are even quoted on the Nigerian Stock Exchange or the Lagos Stock Exchange or the Nigerian Exchange, as we call it now. And numerous that are not even listed, that are not quoted. There are accountants in every area. Those are direct and indirect product of Parking Toller Williams. You can't count them. In 1952, Mr. Akintola Williams set up the Akintola Williams & Company, which was Nigeria's first indigenous chartered accountancy firm. That was two years after returning to Nigeria from London, where he had qualified as a chartered accountant, becoming the first of Africa's sons and daughters to attain that height. His firm, too, prospered, becoming the largest professional services firm in Nigeria, with a staff of over 600. That translated to being the first and most successful and largest indigenous black African firm of chartered accountants in the world. My first and earliest uh, memory of Mr. Akintola Williams would date back to 1955 when I was on my way to England to study accountancy. He had just started uh, his own public practice, Akintola Williams & Co. And I was on my way to England and my parents had sent me to him to talk to me about the profession. And then I went to England. And then when I qualified, uh, he visited England on recruitment. I had kept a little bit of contact with him. I resigned two times. And he was, he humbled himself enough to plead with me to come back and stay. I thought that was great. The first time he said, so why are you living with Victor? And I said, because I don't think your firm can continue to keep me. You can't pay me what will enable me to keep myself at the levels I want to live my life. So I said, okay, how much do you need extra? So I told him and he said, 
I give you the check for the next 12 months. In 2004, the firm adopted a new name, Akintola Williams Deloitte. When you look around the members, the members of the club, you find that very few. The Club for Gentlemen, as the Metropolitan Club is called, birthed on Tuesday, October 13, 1959, with Mr. Akintola Williams as one of the founding pillars. I occasionally attended concerts when invited, mostly by late mama to the Musan Center. And once I recall at Mr. Bode Manuel's Ikui residence, when Papa nudged his intent to have an African Cancer Center. I hope and pray the Africa Cancer Center will be actualized in his honor. Let me tell this story. I recall that uh, when I was a talent partner, at that time I was saddled with the, the talent agenda of the firm. So he sent a CV to me uh, that I should consider the individual for an employment. But when I checked our database, I realized that that particular candidate had written our test and was not successful. So I placed a call to Mr. Williams to tell him, sir, uh, your candidate had written our test before. She was not successful, therefore will not uh, take the candidate. He said, thank you for calling me and for reassuring me that the firm I established uh, uh, is doing the right thing. And when I told some of the partners, they felt that I shouldn't have said no to Mr. Williams. But Mr. Williams uh, was very pleased that I took the right uh, decision. Pakitola Williams represents integrity, honesty. He actually helped in the development of young professionals in Nigeria. Most other accountants in Nigeria will see themselves as owing a number of legacy and owing their success story today. <laughs> well, I don't think the junior. On Tuesday, August 8th, 2023, the gentleman stood to celebrate the doyen of accountancy and a founding member of the club when he clocked 104 years. And with his passage, they gather again to celebrate the life and time of the Titan, a man with many firsts. Mr. Akitola Williams is unusual, unique, okay? It seemed as a young man to have found his purpose early in life and focus on accounting, all right? And um, anybody, anybody that had anything to do with business, accounting, business, economics, law, banking, uh, you had to know Mr. Williams. Simple. Paul Williams was till his death the chairman board of trustees of Lions Clubs International, multiple district 404, Nigeria. He was one of the building blocks of the Nigeria Britain Association. The organization describes him as an outstanding leader who championed ethical practices, professionalism, excellence, friendship, and cultural exchange between Nigeria and Britain. He's very simple, he's a very honest person, um, straightforward, um, what else, I would say, he's down to earth. He's not, he's not, um, an, he's, he's not an over, over, overly complicated person. He likes to be on time, he likes, I don't know, he likes to sit, like, he likes the finer things in life. Integrity topped the list of his many accolades. In, a, in, in an environment where everybody's described as great or Mr. Akitola Williams is unusual, unique, okay? He seemed as a young man to have found his purpose early in life and focus on accounting, all right? And um, anybody, anybody that had anything to do with business, accounting, business, economics, law, banking, uh, you had to know Mr. Williams. He was a foundation member and the founding treasurer of the Lions Club, an international club involved in charity and healthcare projects. For nearly 60 years, he served as a lion, inspiring others through his service and his generous spirit. He and his wife were co-founders of the Nigeria Spanish Association, which aimed to promote trade, culture and friendship between Nigeria and Spain. 
He also served as the vice patron of the Yoruba Tennis Club. When my, my wife then said, oh, she's not going to practice at a medical doctor, she's going to practice at a com uh, 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 community pediatrician because she wanted to set up a center so I would look after autistic children. And my son was also going to that autistic center. And Akintola Williams heard about it. And do you know that uh, Mr. Akintola Williams then became an advocate of that center? She, he actually went out of his way to get people to donate and sponsor whatever is going on in that center. Beyond his exploits professionally, he never hid his love for God. Mr. Akintola Williams, CFR, OFR, CBE, who was a church boy and choir member since being a child, was the chairman of the building committee at the Methodist Church in Lagos, Nigeria. When I was pastor in charge of the Redeemer Center of God, Christ Church Parish, one day I got a call from Padre Williams, and he said, Pastor, I said, yes, sir, because I want to come and visit your church. You want to come and visit my church, or you want me to come and visit you? He says, I want to come and visit your church, and I'm coming with my, my wife. I said, what do you want to come to do, sir? So when, you, when I get there, you will know. So Pagitola left the Samson Ikoi, drove all the way to Bagada, and met me in this church we had just built in Bagada. And he sat down and he says, Pastor, I have come to learn from you. I almost jumped out of my seat. I said, what have you come to learn? He said, well, I've been chairman of the local Methodist Church Building Committee, and I heard that you just built a facility here. Please allow me to go on top of this facility to note the things that you have done, the way you did it, so that I can use some of your ideas in the local moment of this church. I don't think I have recovered from that business till today. However much success he made professionally, he did no less as a family man. His love for family was deep and profound. I think the most tender moment I saw my father was um, when my wife died. and. Um, he was quite. He was already 90, 95 years ago. He was, so he was ninety nine then. He he got to know about it. Came to my apartment, walked up the steps. Came um, because my wife died uh, um, in her sleep. The police wouldn't allow us to move her, so she was still in the bed. And my father came, saw her. Dropped his hand on her leg, then walked out of the room. He, he just said, mm. walked out and uh, came home, came back to his home. And he, but he didn't say a word to anybody. And I think he was just devastated. My wife and my, my father were, were extremely close. And I don't know what damage that did to him, but I think it was permanent. Um, until today, he doesn't think she's dead. Mr. Williams' success is traced to the strong backing he received from his wife, who died ahead of his 90th birthday. My mother was a strong woman, go-getter, activist, full of life. But I guess that's where it goes. But they liked each other. They liked each other a lot. He may have been survived by two children but his indirect children are all over town. You just begin to say, oh, this person is not maybe something that's not even human because we are accountants and we believe that, oh, we want to see the man that they said is the first chartered accountant, the first this, the first that. But when you get to meet him, you will just see somebody that is straight. In fact, from his voice, you will see somebody that is in charge. He comes with that authority, he will speak to you, loud voice and all of that. We all admire him. Akintara Williams had been a very caring uh, papa we all have had. You all will recall that when we brought up Zenith to the Stock Exchange, that was um, in 2004, I remember. He was there with us, not only to cut the tape, to also raise up the banner of uh, introduction of Zenith Bank to not only Nigeria, to, to the world. 
and it was so amazing that it appeared almost the front page of all the newspapers in the country. There are many strange things not many people know about Mr. Williams. Strong perception of his very, being very conservative. Um, I think one of the things that was always amusing was uh, his uh, attitude to beards. He didn't like beards. I remember him reporting one of his employees to my uh, father that he brought this young man back from England to come to work here. And you know what he did? He grew a beard. He actually grew a beard. He had a special fondness for me. And uh, I remember that it is on record that I'm the first person to have lunch in his office. Not in the reception, not in the conference room, but right in his office. And at that time, I had a beard. And he said, well, only two of you are allowed to have beard. And I said, who is the other person? He said, myself and his late younger brother, Uncle Soji Williams. There are not so many people present who can recreate their memory of Mr. Williams in his younger days. 96-year-old Dr. Frederick Adenii Coker, a retired gynecologist, is about eight years younger than the Colossus. Dr. Coker, who was the middleman between his sister and Mr. Williams, who later became Mrs. Williams. Um, I met Mr. Akita Williams when I was about seven, eight years old. Um, at that time, he was working at CMS Grammar School, I think as a clerk or so. And um, I became the errand boy between Mr. Akitara Williams and my sister. In fact, I'm the vehicle of communication between the two of them. Letters, I carry letters from me, my sister to Mr. Williams and from Mr. Williams to my sister. And it continues like that. When Pa Akintola Williams passed on in August, some people considered his death as one not deserving of mourning, since he died, spent out, describing his life as epic. He was a colossus, not just in the accountancy world, not just in the financial services world, not just in the stock exchange, as we have heard, but also in many other fields. Tributes have continued to pour in from all angles. <laughs> In spite of many chieftaincy titles and honorary doctorate degrees, Mr. Williams preferred to identify as Mr. The childhood sweethearts were eventually married on the 27th of December, 1947. His close allies and family members talk about how he religiously followed his meals with a special likeness to red wine, which some have touted for his longevity. Papa lived and believed in God, and he died in the Lord at old age. After a 104-year sojourn on Earth, Mr. Williams has left the stage, but not without the retinue of legacies and the number of lives he helped redefine. And like William Shakespeare, his namesake, all's well that ends well. And that draws the curtain on this special package of the life and times of an amazing gem. Please share with us any names of people you deem worthy of being celebrated. See you next time. Until now and then, keep being amazing. <laughs>